All right, welcome. This is the AP Physics Workbook Solutions. Here I have Unit 3, Circular Motion and Gravitation. Uh, the section is 3J, which is centripetal versus linear acceleration. All right, so here you're going to give in this scenario. Uh, consider a cone made out of a material. So this is a cone, like an ice cream cone. And you put an object here, okay? Um, in case one, you just let the object slide down, okay, towards the bottom here. In case two, you release the block, but now it travels at a constant speed around the dot. Okay? So, in the first case, the block is released from rest and it slides down. So that is equivalent to just an object sliding down a ramp. Um, is the block accelerating? So we know from our force section that if we slide an object down, there it is having a change in velocity, and that is occurring over time. So the fact that velocity changes, we would say there is a acceleration. Here I have some notes on acceleration. If you would like to be reminded, you can read those if you would like as well. And here, if you would like the explanation, right? See, I can write the object is sliding down due to the force of gravity by the Earth pulling on the object. Okay, that's it. So there's an mg pulling it, so it's going to be accelerating. All right, we would say that here the object is accelerating down the cone parallel to its surface all right that's going to make more sense when i draw you the um picture okay but it's sliding um parallel to the surface in which the cone imagine the ramp all right second case you release the object and it's spinning in a circular motion all right Okay. In case B, the object is released with initial motion and it travels with constant speed along a dotted line. We know that an object going around in a circle has a change in velocity or angular velocity, okay, which is omega. And so therefore, there is going to be an alpha or a angular acceleration. So we would say here, yes, there is a angular acceleration. And why? We would say that the object is, the object has a uh, angular acceleration towards the center of rotation that is caused. by the object oh, that is caused by the object going around going around right change in velocity right right that object going around, that's technically the change in velocity. The object has an angular acceleration towards the center of rotation that is caused by the object going around in a circle. Okay. There you go. That's it. So here, uh, the object slides down to the uh, change in velocity due to the Earth pulling on it. Here it has a uh, angular acceleration caused from the object going in a circle. All right. So here, here's some notes if you would like to take a look at it. Here, this is a very straightforward one. Um, <clears throat> it says to label the components for case one. Right? It's the object sliding on a block. So here I have a good problem with a skier sliding down. Right? So it's right here if you would like to take a look. Right? You can look at its components in the notes right here. All right? 
So I'm just going to draw that right here for case one, because that's, again, that's the object sliding down. Okay. And I think the question only wants the, do they want just the force, not the components? Draw the normal force extended in the diagram. Yep. Make sure it's the proper length. All right. So, okay. All right. I want to make sure these are sort of the same here. So force of gravity is, oh, that's an ugly one. Force of gravity. Ah, why is it so ugly? Screw this, dude. <laughs> Just going to make a line. Here. And... Here, good. And let me just draw the dot. Let me just draw the arrow. Okay. And this is force of gravity. And this is force normal. Okay. Likewise for this one. Okay. So this is the object sliding down. And if you think about this as the banking angle, this is like the car revolving around the, the circular track. Same thing. Okay, um, gravity is pointing down, and you have your force normal, which is um, in a weird theta angle here. Okay, so it behaves the same exact way. All right. Okay, and it depends on the speed of the object. So I'm going to make it go here, and I have to have its same length right there, roughly. Good. All right. Here and here. All right, good. Cross that out. Cross that out. Cross that out. And what you have here is your force of gravity, and that is your force normal. Good. All right. So here, they would like to us to derive an expression for um, the first part. Okay. All right. Um, and derive an equation for the magnitude of the normal force. So you want here, you want the, for the normal force. So in the end, you want force normal equal to something. All right, for the first cases. Okay, if you would like to take a look for the first case, this is the first case here. This is case uh, one. All right, this is case one here. All right. All you have to take a look at, again, if you want to read this, here you go. But the um, important note is that to revolve around the vector, you break it down to two vector components. The uh, force of gravity in the x direction is mg sine. The gravity in the y direction is negative um, mg cosine theta. You will set up new tints right here. New tints, a second law in the... Uh, well, no, no, you want the, in this case, it's the vertical. So you want to do this part. So you can ignore this if you want, right? You can ignore the first part. You want to take a look at this part. Uh, you want to see, you want the AY. So let's see if we can get rid of FN from the Y component of the Newton's second law. All right, here you set it up, set equals to zero, and again, why? Because there is no motion in the y direction. It is perpendicular to the slope. Okay, thus we can solve for fn. There you go. That's the same exact math. So, again, I'm just going to write it right here. Okay. There is no... Motion in the y direction. Okay, that means, right? Okay, which is, which is perpendicular to the slope. Okay, and you can just set it up here. All right, let's just write it. Just do this in green. Okay. Here is summation of F in the Y direction is equal to MA in the Y direction. What are the parts that make this up? You have your force normal minus your force of gravity in, and again, cosine theta. We have that right here, MG cosine theta. All right. 
is equal to theta. Do you want me to write mg theta here? Would that would that help you? Right? Okay. If you want, let me just write that for you. If you like mg cosine theta. Okay. Add this to the other side. Fn is equal to mg cosine theta. You're done. Second part. Okay. Uh, again, this is just sliding down a ramp here for the second part. It's revolving around the bank. So it behaves exactly like this. Okay. So like we said here, let me do this in blue. Um, let's see here. You could read the information, blah, blah, blah. Fn exerts by the road is perpendicular to the surface. All right. Right? The normal bank on the car around a bank curve revolve into its horizontal and vertical component. Their centripetal acceleration is horizontal, not perpendicular to the slope. Okay. Right. So please read that. The centripetal acceleration is uh, horizontal, not parallel to the slope road. In this case, the slope of the cone. All right, so very straightforward. We can say here, all right. That uh, the, that there, the, the, uh, the, and tripetal acceleration is horizontal, all right, not vertical, okay, that's very important here, all right, so we could set up our equation, all right, same thing, summation of F, Summation of the forces in the y direction is equal to m a in the y direction. Oh, oh. All right. So, what are the parts that make this up? Again, there are two parts: the what cosine part, right, and the down part, right. We just look at the y component. Okay. So it is f n cosine theta, and that's going to be what minus m g right minus mg that's opposite and equal to zero because again this goes to zero because again of this same thing here so here how do you get this alone fn cosine theta is equal to mg you add mg to both sides then you divide by cosine theta so fn is equal to mg cosine theta there you go all right so i'm going to grab these two equations because the next problem is says to compare them okay so this is first case, second case. All right. So if you take a look, okay, I have the unit circle here for cosine because here the force of the force normal here depends on the way the cosine interacts. Okay. So you are going to assume assume um, mass and gravity are the same for both um, cases, the force normal only depends, um, the force normal is a function of cos, um, of the angle of cosine of the angle. In this case, it's the angle of the theta, all right? So look at how it behaves, right? So the angle can um, let the angle be from um, let the angle. So it's it's hard to write this. So let I'm gonna let theta let theta exist between uh, 90 degrees and zero degrees but not equal to right it's going to be ugly if it's going to be equal to okay all right so watch this okay 
watch as you increase from zero to um, 90, right? So you go from, right? You go from square root of three over two, then you go to square root two over two, then you end up with one half, and then you approach zero, okay? Notice how the number is here is getting what? The value. So the value of cosine, right? The value of cosine is getting smaller as the angle approaches um, 90 degrees. All right. Okay. Now this is very important because it takes a look, right? Now I'm gonna make this in green. In case one, right? The cosine getting smaller will cause the force normal to get smaller. All right? Does that make sense? Right, the cosine theta becomes smaller, so Fn has to get smaller. Perfect, right? Because it's both on the top side, right? But in case two, right, the cos um, the cosine is on is the what is the what do they call it? Denom denominator. The denominator, um, the cosine is in the denominator, right? So as the cosine gets um, gets uh, so as the soli gets smaller, okay. So do you see how this becomes smaller? The fact that this becomes smaller, right? This has to get bigger. Okay? The opposite has side has to get bigger because you're dividing by a smaller number. Okay? All right? So the fact that the cosines denominator and the cosines get bigger, the the force normal gets larger why does it get larger because again you're dividing by a smaller number get it so there you go so in short right this is the whole explanation in short this explains that the normal force is greater in case two so in this case if you go back here do you see why now I draw the force normal bigger here in part B? It's because of this exact idea, okay? Again, uh, this is just me giving a complete answer, okay? Um, in short, you can just say this in the end. Um, I know some of you are really bad at your algebra, so that's the reason why I did this part. This part just helps you with your trig okay good oh sorry this part this just helps you with your trig everything else is physics this is just the trig setup to do the problem okay so there you go those are all your solutions for uh 3j